Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Brent, and it's another prayer meeting night and shared a, a devotional that's really part two of, of a verse that I started looking at last week. And uh, we talk about bearing with one another. And we joked about how sometimes that feels like we're just putting up with one another. But tonight in prayer meeting, the 14 people that logged on, uh, some prayer requests came in just before prayer meeting started. And it was just a blessing to be part of the body of Christ and know that we are bearing with one another, uh, bearing, helping other people bear their burdens of, of concern and mourning and, and, and just uh, needing peace as they hear about diagnoses and tests that need to be done and all the kind of things that are happening. So it's a blessing. And I, I want to open up in a word of prayer and just share uh, part two of, of what this verse has meant to me. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the way you love and care for us, that you provide your spirit, you provide your word, you provide your people. We are not to live this life alone. We need you. And I pray that you would help us to see that as we just look into this verse a little bit and see another uh, uh, the first of three characteristics that help us to truly bear with one another. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We introduced the verse last week, Ephesians 4, 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Last week, we emphasized the thought of being complete, that everything that follows, we want to be whole. We want to be holy. We want to know that that God has the ability to make us excel and grow. If uh, we have that, that desire to do something and we feel like we are weak, that's when we are strong. We learn some of the verses that we are complete in Christ. And with the power of the Spirit, we can overcome our own struggles and we can be the things that God wants us to be. And then, as I said, this verse has that idea of three characteristics and then what those characteristics help us do. The, the theme that I'm looking at over these weeks will be bearing with one another. And I, tonight I really want to emphasize the thought that we can take the time to help bear one another's burdens in prayer. But to begin to do that, we have to have the characteristic of humility. Be complete, but be completely humble. Focusing on humility. And I think what does humility mean to you? Oh, I had a number of answers tonight. One of the ones that I think of is Jesus washing the disciples' feet. That if he was willing to humble himself, then we ought to humble ourselves. So, but what is humility? The Bible describes humility as meekness, which is power. It's not like they're weak. It's power, but it's under control. And it's under control because we see ourselves as lowly. And I particularly like that last phrase, the absence of self. In other words, we learn to say, it's not about me. I'm not the center of the universe. Things don't have to line up with what I want in this world. I trust the Lord and I humble myself before him and I humble myself before others. I want to be completely humble. I want to share a couple of verses about that. First of all, Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You'll recognize that as the beginning of the Beatitudes. It is the first of the blessed attitudes. It is the foundation for all the things that will follow. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? I've heard the word bankrupt, that we are bankrupt before the Lord. We bring nothing to him. Nothing in, our, in my hand I bring, only to his cross I cling. To know that we have nothing, and yet we can have the kingdom of heaven when we realize we have nothing and turn to the Savior and allow his spirit to work in our lives. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's a, a foundational thought for what humility is. Another thought of humility, if we think about the absence of self, you've probably heard that phrase, dying to self. Well, Galatians 2.20 is where that thought comes from. I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of by, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There's so many beautiful things in this verse, but we might stumble over this idea. Well, I have to die. 
I have to be crucified. Well, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified in Christ. He humbled himself to, to death, even death on a cross. So in Christ, we can be humbled and die to ourselves. Not, no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. I think of so many times when I seek to tackle a problem and I seek to figure it out on my own and, and I don't turn to the Lord and I don't get much satisfaction. I don't find many answers, but then I turn to the Lord. And even if he doesn't provide the answers that I'm seeking, he provides himself. And I can live by faith in the son of God, who's a good God. He gave his son to die for me. He loved me, he gave himself for me. Those are the things that I can cling to. But as I said, we, we don't like that phrase dying to yourself because it seems like we're giving up something. The next verse it's not that we're giving up, it's what we get. It's what we become. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, crucified with Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. There are certain things that I don't want to pass away from my life that need to pass away. And I don't, if I focus on them, I can become very selfish, very protective. But if I let them pass away, if I let myself be in Christ and become a new creation, the new has come. All oh, the things that this world pro uh, promises fail us time and time again. But the new can come as we become new creations in Jesus Christ. Now, these verses that I started with all suggest the humility we have before God. And it, to be humble before God makes sense because he is awesome. And we should fear him and humble ourselves before him. But Jesus also did some teaching about our humility toward one another. He taught, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. We're, we're amazed at, at the influencers of life, the powerful, the rich, the famous, whatever we look to. That's what the world standard is, to be great. But in verse 26 of Matthew 20, Jesus said, it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. It was said tonight that, you know, it's easy to live by the world standard, to live according to the world's view of greatness, but Jesus makes a promise. It doesn't have to be that way. It shall not be so among you. You are going to be willing to have an absence of self and serve other people. You are going to be willing and, and, and delight, delighted in submitting yourself as a slave to put others first. If we're going to bear with one another, we have to learn this complete humility, that we're not holding on to anything in our own understanding. We're not holding on to what we think we deserve. We are willing to surrender it all to Jesus because he says, if we come to him in poverty and spirit, ours is the kingdom of heaven. Let me pray. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the many prayer requests that we had tonight in prayer meeting, the challenges, the, even the, the, someone who was running off to the hospital to be with somebody. We, we recognize the, the, the fact that we need you. I pray for the snow that uh, is supposed to come, that it won't be uh, too debilitating for anybody to get around. I pray that people would be safe as we pray for one young lady tonight that, that uh, fell in the black ice and, and, and had some, some physical problems from that fall. Lord, all these things, we can bear with one another in prayer, taking the time and humility to realize whatever agenda I have, I submit it to you. And I, I want to serve you, Father. And as we serve you, Jesus, you led, your, you led your disciples to serve one another. You gave them the example of washing feet and said, this is what you need to do for one another. Father, I thank you. I pray for all those that we've been praying for. We know that all the physical needs that we pray for, the most important need is to have a relationship with you and through Jesus Christ. Jesus, you died for our sins and rose again. And your scriptures make it very clear. All those who call upon your name, Jesus, for salvation, for forgiveness, because you are the only 
true sacrifice for sin. No one can come to the Father but by you. I pray for everyone that hears this, that they would come to know you as their personal Savior by recognizing your humility and the humility you call us to live out. I thank you, Father. It's in all Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless.